I'm a big believer in constantly diversifying the resume, moving from medium to medium. And if you are strictly working in commercials and a dip happens in commercials, you could see yourself going down a quarter of yeah. a salary, you know, of, of your annual income. Um, and then again, if you have a, a actor strike or a writer strike and you're only working in TV or you're only working in narrative, at that point, it's going to be quite tricky for you to get another job. Welcome to Cinema 5D on the go. Moving conversations about moving images with filmmakers and industry leaders. Brought to you by Tilta, Blackmagic Design, Manfrotto, and Olympus OMD in association with Sony. This is your host, Nino Leitner. Welcome to this episode of Cinema 5D on the go. We are here in Poland in a town which I can't actually say because it's... Big dos. Big, big dos. Big dos. Yeah. So we are a camera image, camera image festival and I'm very happy to have on board two agents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's Casper from Copenhagen from Artificial uh, mm -hmm. Agency yeah. and Kristen in the back from WPA in Los Angeles. Yes. Right? Oh, London and Paris. Oh, London and... Okay. Wow. <laughs> so guys, um, actually I asked you to come on board my vehicle last night after attending a very nice panel discussion um, about, you know, how to break, actually how to get an agent, right? How to get representation for oh. young directors of photography. Um, how to proceed after, after uni. Okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, can you say a few words about each of, of what you actually do? In general, what an agent does or what an agent can do for, uh, you know, a anybody in the filmmaking industry and particularly DPs and what your companies in particular are doing. Yeah. Um, well, uh, let's see where to start. We're a talent agency in LA that primarily focuses on below the line talent, like cinematographers, production designers, editors, and uh, producers. Um, I think an agent, it, everybody is different with regards to what they're looking for, but it's somebody who manages the career and helps guide you through the different decisions you're making with regards to material and projects and, and which different projects to take. So it's more of a management of the client's career and a lot of his personal life as well. I mean, I, we work really closely with our clients. Does that answer the question? Yeah, okay. totally. <laughs> I totally agree. I agree, Kristen. So, when, you know, when when my mother asks me, "What do you do?" and and also keep in mind, I work uh, in Copenhagen. We work all over Europe, but but I work out of our Copenhagen office. And when my mother asks me what I do, I tell her, "Well, I'm a professional mother for the people I work <laughs> with." Um, and of course, we do. You know, there's a legal part, there's the classic negotiation, the contract stuff. Well, that's a big part of it. But, but, but honestly, that's that's maybe the easiest thing. And and for me, it's not that it isn't exciting. Uh, it can be exciting to do a, a negotiation as long as it's on behalf of. The people I rep, I hate negotiating on behalf of myself. <laughs> um, there's the more technical stuff, and then there's the emotional stuff. Then there's assessing a script. Is this a good script? What is a good script? Sometimes, like I even after like being in the industry 15 years, I read a script and I hate it, and I said say no to like this is just my opinion, but I discussed this with the DPs and say, I hate this script, and you end up watching it. And it's a shot by someone else, and it's amazing. Oh no! I, I, that happens. You mean just visually, just the cinematography? No, but it's just much better. Like you off get, the page. You, yeah. it's sometimes it's good on paper, sometimes it's good on the screen. It's, it's, it's so tricky, and it has to do with a lot of things. What makes a good movie, and it's super personal. Like I. You know, well, that's everybody's decision we, on what projects they take is so personal. Ex and and where they are in life absolutely. is so absolutely. important. And all these things are evaluated when we consider if we're going to take a commercial or pilot, a movie, some time off, be home with the family. Yeah. All these different priorities change and it's our job yeah. to adapt to that. So you guys ex exactly. represent uh, directors of photography mainly or all kinds? All kinds of talent. Um, mm -hmm. As he was saying, his agency recently got composers and set designers. 
Um, I've always been really interested in cinematography. I feel like that's really my first passion. Um, but I love production design. I recently started representing editors as well, and our agency has done so since we started. Yeah, cool. I was as well, but I I'm in charge of the the, the DPs uh, together with some colleagues, of course. But that's that's my main focus. So, what's the typical process when you you know like a client uh, like a feature film? Oops. Um, they would ask you for you know finding a DP for a project. Um, how do you approach that? I mean, is it are you talking to the director first? Are you you know are you reading the script and absolutely I can't give suggestions if I don't know what they're looking for and and what's involved in the project I mean you can get some summaries from the people that are looking maybe a producer or a line producer about the project but I think in order to give real good advice you have to you have to look at everything and, and look at it the way that the client does try to gather as much information as possible and 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 often not always it differs a lot I think I don't know if we're going to have time to talk about this, but there's a huge difference between Europe, the countries in Europe, America, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's changing a lot in Northern Europe. It used to be driven by directors, so they took all they had like all the like they took the decisions. I still am in a direct line with the directors more than producers, but it's becoming more and more produce producer driven. It's kind of changing and becoming more like it is in America which is there are good things and bad things about it it's tricky they, it, 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 is, it gets in it, the way of it, the relationship super, with the directors it's super tricky and sometimes uh, the producers or directors but, but sometimes they want to share a lot of information sometimes they're a bit kind of like well we'll send you a summary we have this and uh, non-disclosure thing you need to sign Lots yada, of yada. <laughs> yeah and and also like if we're talking commercial projects we handle commercial feature whatever's in between um, when it comes to commercials you know you you always want to ask for what the agency actually have written not only like everybody can write a right, beautiful the boards mm, plus the director's the, treatment always because, the boards right. not only the treatments like everyone can put how many Corinne and Terrence Malick in a treatment and you're going to get blown away but if it's the, very the, smart exactly because they get they'll yeah. see the treatment be engaged or excited yeah. and then get to set and realize the agency has no intention of shooting that exactly or they haven't approved it so getting as much information as Absolutely. possible budget wise the gear I mean you have to ask as many questions we even get you know sometimes we're finding out information for their crew as well because their crew is so important and their crew rates and making sure that they're properly yeah. looked after and and provided for uh, and is how interesting. And, yeah. and and also Kristen who else are they talking to absolutely this is of course really vulnerable and this is not to try to uh, I guess it's not to try to get secrets or anything but it's you want to know you you who? I just love if they're open and say well we asked a couple of other DPs or we asked a couple of other agencies or Absolutely. because it's a different process if they're asking me is Manuel Clau available for this thing that's one thing or if they ask me hey would you like to come up with a suggestion or it's 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 different <coughs> from or even like of, of on a commercial product they, they would they would if it's like an open project, especially out of London, for instance, they would often want more suggestions, mm -hmm. and I, I prefer to send one DP. I I send and, maybe and, one or two and pitch in strong. Unless they they said I need two or three people, but I've never sent more than three people out for on a submission. But mm -hmm. but you don't want to be arrogant when you send out only one or two no. so you want to have you, you want to explain them you know I understand that the client might want to see and, and and if they're asking I hate this question but but we get it a lot who's available for this right it, I, who's av I have a lot of people available but this guy just got divorced he's not going to Cape Town because of his kids yeah. this guy just went out shooting a feature he wants he wants to stay at home in Stockholm this is the info uh, this girl our and office is not to share with producers but how so, we look at who's so available who's yeah. available is availability so it depends and well it and showing all the that time. and when you come up with only one or two or three uh, suggestions it kind of shows that you do your job if right. they trust you we because do our homework. Yeah, you did your homework exactly. Because you actually selected somebody which you think who Based you on think the is right. You're looking for, yes. Exactly. And then if it if it works out, I feel like that's one of the things that's 
kind of if it's at any use to have an agent if there's any value in having an agent I think that one thing when you pitch in hard you, you put time in to make a proper description you send the right things you maybe even send stuff that's in development whatever because you feel so strongly that this is you have to you have to think outside the box and you have to attack it from all sides especially yeah. when you're working with clients that are working on a wide range of projects you know you can have somebody who's working primarily yeah. in commercials and a future project comes up that you know he's absolutely right for and you've got to think creatively how you're going to get the director and producer engaged not just with our pitch but then pulling stills or setting up a Skype meeting or showing him some edits of music videos that are app, you know appropriate yeah but really being cr as creative as possible because they they want you to help them you know they're looking for us for advice and and they're looking to us to solve their problem in finding the right DP you guys also have so much insight into you know a lot of different DPs' careers exactly. and, and like what the what's market going wants. on. So you're kind of the intersection between those. Would you suggest for a DP to, you know, stay as broad as possible in terms of what they are doing, the kinds of jobs they're taking, or should they focus on, you know, <coughs> only me. features or only commercials no, or you stuff can't. like that? I mean, in the states, it's imperative that you are constantly moving because. So many different variables contribute as to whether or not a project is going, both on the narrative and the commercial side. And if you are strictly working in commercials and a dip happens in commercials, you could see yourself going down a quarter of yeah. a salary, you know, of, of your annual income. Um, and then again, if you have a, a actor strike or a writer strike, and you're only working in TV or you're only working in narrative, at that point, it's going to be quite tricky for you to get another job or find something imminent, imminently. So I'm a big believer in constantly diversifying the profile, constantly diversifying the resume, moving from medium to medium, and I love shocking people. I love taking somebody who yeah. does features and then putting them on an awesome, you know, high yeah. or high profile yeah. Netflix job. I also Horns. think creatively it's really um, inspiring to do different stuff. I Absolutely. Mean, if I get bored in one field, like I should a lot of documentary work, but you know, sometimes I feel like ah okay I need to break out and do you know a music video or something or a free project or something which is uh, actually you know just a passion project and then you end up getting jobs because of that Absolutely. because people see that and passion they recognize your work are really really important. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, I showed a video during the agent panel of music videos that had won camera homage that had won awards all over, but the whole video was c consisted of jobs that had been shot for free. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Nobody had been paid. Oh, there's, yeah, yeah. Well, I that's agree. very often when you can do whatever you want Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. That's yeah. creative Absolutely. freedom. That was, I think I mentioned that yesterday when, when you know, t do you want to shoot this music video? You can, you can assess it from all different angles, but I think there needs to be like a strong creative ambition driving it. B I've been in this industry for 15 years now, and I've kind of come to this conclusion that strong creative people are constantly out exploring or they're curious about something. Yeah. Whether it's a new rehoused whatever geek stuff, <laughs> whether it's lighting from uh, getting inspiration from Italian painters, whether it's uh, something completely different, what I try to do is constantly encourage them to be really ambitious about that getting that inspiration and taking time to do that and and I feel there is a lot of these like pro bono passion projects but I feel for DPs I feel really strongly about DPs also be the driving force mm -hmm. and also um, putting their ambition out there it's a bit vulnerable but, but you know, at, but, but, that, but it's. I feel it it's so important because but a lot you, of them don't have time, though. I mean, a lot of them are. They're so busy on projects. Why not? Sometimes it's hard unless they they wrap something big and they come to decompress and then they kind of you know reconnect with some people that they yeah. were, hadn't been working with. But I think a lot of our clients are so busy on their in their jobs and life and whatnot that it really requires us to reach out to directors they've been working with or knowing what, what music videos are going on and, and yeah. just being so, aware of everything so in the So sharing that ambition with us and, and I love 
like you know when the DPs send you stuff go to watch this art exhibition I've seen this movie have you seen it I'm so inspired by this thing whatever and then they would send it to us and then we would say yeah hey let's do something about it if you have an ambition and want something to happen you have to Tell it to the at least tell it to well, your agent. you have agent. to make it happen, yeah. and 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 we can help put yeah. it into form and say, oh, you're super busy, but let's do something about this mm. in this weekend. We'll grab hold of a producer. Oh, I heard about this project. Maybe we can trick them into shooting on film. I will call the lab in Stockholm. Let's make a deal. Let's try to persuade the producers because you really want to shoot on that thing, and we know it's going to be important because instead of doing twenty like mediocre like kind of okay pro bono you're doing do one thing and do it hard and do it like with everything and if it doesn't work out at least you try it yeah. but often it works out a lot of times we know who we want to work with we know who we are inspired of and the European culture is quite different from America especially northern Europe we're so closed and we don't want to reach out and yeah. we don't want to tell people like if, if you see something magnificent as a DP go fucking write the guy or girl or whomever did it and and tell them about it because no one does I know so many directors and and, <laughs> and D, like young DPs would say oh they get tons of mails no they don't no one tells them yeah. and they're vulnerable souls and, and be generous and tell them I love your work and, and, and this is not to maybe you, you don't you don't have to do it because because you're trying to figure out how to get a job from them but just do it and not worry about it exactly you know I, I encourage all the DPs to off to reach out to directors directly yeah. to start those connections that will result in in these relationships that will grow into passion projects yeah. to bigger projects but I think that the DPs the best use of their downtime is reaching out is watching knowing what's going on the market and reaching out and meeting directors. Yeah.